Welcome again. What does it mean to do your duty? How do you do your duty as a Christian? Let's read about it in Luke chapter 17. This is where where we're at at our scripture readings. Luke chapter 17, verses 7 through 9, excuse me, verses 7 through 10. These are the words of the Lord himself. He says, But who is there among you, having a servant plowing or keeping sheep, that will say when he comes in from the field, Come in immediately and sit down at the table, and will not rather tell him, Prepare my supper, clothe yourself properly, and serve me. While I eat and drink, afterward you shall eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded? I think not. Even so, you also, when you have done all the things that are commanded you, say we are unworthy servants. We have done our duty. Okay. So this is what Jesus is talking about here. When when there's a master of the house, he sends out a servant into the field or to keep the sheep, and they come in and you know, does the does the master say, Oh, come in come come in immediately and sit down at the table? No, that servant's got more to do. It says here, you know, the, the master would say, you know, prepare my supper. I know you've worked hard out in the field, but you've got some more work to do there, servant. Prepare my supper. Supper, And by the way, clothe yourself properly, okay? Take off those old dirty manure, manure-filled uh, clothes you got on there before you prepare my supper. Clothe yourself properly. And, and, you know, show some respect around here, especially when you're serving me at my table. Uh, and, and I will sit here and I will eat and drink. I will eat and drink while you serve me. Jesus is saying, basically, if you do only that which you are commanded to do, or do you deserve to be thanked for it? No. That's your duty. That's your minimal, your quota. You've, you've just met your quota. If you have only done what you are commanded to do, you've just done your quota. You haven't really gone over and above anything. You don't deserve to be thanked. You don't deserve the master or the Lord to to say thank you. You don't deserve any thanks because you only did what was commanded. You didn't put in any extra effort at all. What Jesus is saying here is, as a Christian, as a servant of God, you should go over and above that which is commanded you. Don't just do what you what you are commanded to do, but go over and above that. Do more than you what, what, what you are commanded to do. And dare I say, today, in this age, there are many people who call themselves Christians, many people who believe that they're Christians, consider themselves Christians, and they don't even go by the commandments of God anyway. They don't even meet the quota, let alone do over and above the quota. They are poor servants of God. Do not be a poor servant of God. Do the commandments. And I say this so much. Like God, yeah, there's 613 commandments, you know, according to the, the Jewish uh, sages. Or all, do all of them apply to, to everybody today? No. You know, a lot of those commandments apply to priests only. A lot of them apply to men only. Some of them apply to women only. Some of them apply to children. Some of them apply to the, uh, you know, the strangers or the visitors, the, the, uh, the people that are from out of the country. But the commandments that, that we can do, we are obligated to do. We, God expects us to do them. Oh, but we can't do it. You know, the commandments of God are holy, just, and good. Yeah, but they're not, it's not impossible. God is not, you know, uh, I always say God is not abusive. He's not a tyrant. He's not a, he, he, he doesn't just bark out commands that he knows that you cannot, you know, cannot do. He doesn't say, you know, before you die, you got to visit five galaxies. You got to visit five different galaxies before you die or else you're going to go to hell. No, he doesn't say that. I mean, actually, at the end of the Torah, um, that is, I'm talking about the books of Moses, uh, after all the commandments came down, so to speak, uh, near the end of the Torah, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, God made it very clear, or excuse me, Deuteronomy chapter 30, God made it very clear that the commandments are not burdensome. They're not, I mean, 
John even said that in his letters. The commandments of God are not burdensome. He says they are not too hard to obey. Deuteronomy chapter 30. God said you don't have to go way up into heaven to get it. You don't have to dig down to the core of the earth to get it. The commandments of God, to obey God, to do what he wants you to do, to to get the word of God in you, to do what is necessary, uh, is right there. It's right there in your mouth, in your heart. It's right there. That's what Jesus meant by repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right there. It's right within your grasp. Okay? The commandments of God are actually easy to obey according to the law, according to the word of God. It's, so, it's easy to obey. You know, God wouldn't give us commandments that he knew that we couldn't obey. I mean, that even the evil father of this day and age wouldn't do that to his children. How much more would, I mean, how much less would, um, would God do that to his children? So the commandments of God, a lot of times uh, the Christians don't even obey that. We need to obey the commandments of God, all the commandments that we can. Eat right, dress right, do whatever the commandments tell you to do. Get serious with God. And more, I say, more. Go over and above it. And if you do, you will get praise from God himself. This is what Jesus is saying here in this teaching. Go over and above your duty and you will be thanked by God Almighty. Thanks again.